Nice tune, eh? I like that. The Monster Cloak. The monster cloak. Da, they played it. They played it in this really lazy. This husband and wife, really kind of s slow uh, fiddle. So Like a shudderingly lovely field of bloom, the gold glow ecstasy of change. And each songbird moving across far beneath us seemed intent on some turning evening shadow mission, portent with umber meanings while the light flickered over the colors of its wings. Limitless and safe I was in the talons 
because of that spiraling, spiraling, spiraling bird. The law, the feeling, the smell of the air up there, the long, rapidly coursing journey to those places far, far over the hills of fire. The awful hunger, the cold, bright moon, the sun on the lip of a sea. come back from this death like I have in the past. Too many of my bearings have been lost. I look outward and inward for some endless, breathless, searing vantage. Lost leaves fall too lightly here, and a fritillary butterfly rises up so gently. story how I found this land up here and uh, let's see to start off when I was a little boy I used to know this song which I'll do for you now uh, it was about a man that had a little shack in the woods and that's why I always wanted to build my cabin there and I always set up this idea in my mind this romantic idea of what I wanted to do with the future and so, uh, is the song.
When I first come to this land, I was not a wealthy man. So I got myself a shack, and I did what I could. And I called my shack, break my back. But the land was sweet and good, and I did what I could. It goes on and on, but that was a song that inspired me. However, when I was younger, I decided that I wanted to live in a cave when I got a little older because uh, I thought that would be really the way to do it, the really primordial means of being alive was to live in a cave. So I traveled all over the East Coast looking for a cave with my dog and uh, finally found one way up in Maine, stayed there for two days, it was so damp, it was right in the ocean, nearly got double pneumonia, and uh, had a hell of a time getting over that cold and uh, decided, well, maybe that's not the thing. So then I started hitching around with this dog and a big pack of all I had and uh, going county seat to county seat looking for tax land. Uh, and over in Cattaraugus County in Little Valley, I found uh, this parcel for sale, 62 and a half acres, and, uh, but nobody seemed to know where it was or where the boundaries lied, lay, blood. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I had to go to the town assessor, and he, he didn't know either too well, but he knew sort of where, told me, and Oh, it was raining the day I came over and pouring rain and there was one ray of light in the sky, one kind of sun ray. And uh, I got over to the land here and by God, if that wasn't where the ray of light was shining and I was just standing there in one ray of light and the wind blowing around the knolls and uh, I said, this is the place. So I bid everything I had on it and I won the bid. It's a sealed bid auction and uh, so here I've been ever since. to the sun, its full course in the sky. Not only the dawn chant through oak and beech, or evening hymn over hills that keep me tuned to the longer rhythms of change and return, but all through the day sing, giving back, giving back the energy in my psalm to the ever-giving sun. One day, when I have the courage to leave my endless, infinitesimal works and wants, I will sing to the sun its full course in the sky. Time will clarify. I feel it must be soon. to go. 
safe in the warmth of my own world I yearn to enter the passes under leaves and over sticks where bugs live 10,000 times as fast as me and rocks breathe 10,000 times as slow. I want to see the seed shell in an isolate ray of light, measure its height in slight soundings, and contemplate its relation to the size of stars. I want to hear if this pebble sings in my pitch, shift, birth-like on my foundation, and somehow sprout or coalesce upwards with its resonance. If the ten thousand stories follow, I will fright at their sudden emergence from the dark and be lost in their meanings. Or if carrying along only the cold, stark, bird-eye wondering, I will grow logarithmically older and closer to the pattern of my conception. When a child, I had the soul, but lack the hunger for these myriad lessons. Now, I am starved with questions and must revive the soul. Hurry, Mike! Hurry, Mike! The mysteries of Emmy's mind. Mom! Mom! Where's Dad? The abyss deepens and descends, flimmered with starlight and a dust of tones. When I die, kick over the outhouse, boys. Throw me in. I won't mind. I'll lie down with what has passed through me and feed flowers too brilliant to be picked. I'm going to preach you a sermon about old man Adam. I don't mean the atom in the Bible, Adam, and I don't mean the atom that Mother Eve made it. I mean the thing that science liberated. Mr. Einstein, he says he's scared, and brother, Mr. Einstein's scared. I'm scared. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Almogordo, Bokeen. You know, life used to be such a simple joy Why the cyclotron was just a super toy. Folks got born, they'd work and marry. Adam was a word in a dictionary. Then it happened. Science boys from every climb, they all pitched in with overtime. Before you know it, the job was done. They hitched up the power of the gall darn sun, splitting atoms while diplomats was splitting hairs. Down foreign-born atoms, time that we extinguish every darned atom that can't speak English. 
But you know, the Adams International, in spite of hysteria, flourishes in Utah and in Siberia. And whether you're red, white, black, or brown, the question's this when you boil it down. To be or not to be, William Shakespeare. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Alma Gordo, Bokeen. Now, the answer to it all is in military datum, like who gets their firstest with the mostest atoms? The peoples of the world must decide their fate. We gotta stick together or disintegrate. Do we hold this truth to be self-evident, that all men may be cremated equal? Stop the world, brother, I'm getting off. Well, if you're scared of an H-bomb, here's what you better do. You better get all the people in the world with you. You better get them all together and let out a yell or they're gonna blow this world plumb to Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Almogordo, Bokeen. Yes, it's up to the people, cause the Adam don't care. You can't fence him and he's just like air. He don't give a damn about politics or who got who in whichever fix. He just likes to sit around, have his nucleus bombarded by neutrons. New York, London, Moscow to Shanghai, Paris, lordy up the flu. You can choose between the brotherhood of man and smithereens. Yes, we can have peace in the world or we're gonna have the world in pieces. box. Great Blue Heron live here, American Bittern, all sorts of uh, birds, all sorts of warblers, uh, all sorts of move through here, and the geese move through here, and, uh, just you know, every possible bird you can think of, hundreds of species I catalog through here. And, the other side of it, it's all a series of lakes and bogs and swamps and pits and floating islands where people have uh, been lost, you know, according to the stories. People have just disappeared under these islands and horses have just sunk down. And farmers have dropped change into the middle and never seen the bottom. Uh, it goes all the way around there. There's islands in, in the lakes, spreads out things like lakes, and over that way it joins an Audubon sanctuary. And it's just like the further you get into it, the more intense it gets, the more primordial and huge, green, unbelievably green fronds and things coming out at you. You don't, you don't you've never seen them before. Ferns. You don't know where you are exactly. I wish the dimension that it maintains, you know, that it that it really has, you know, could come across to people in general. But that's, you know, that's the crusade, you know, that I'm on anyway. That uh, in the world, I mean, people two-dimensionalize what has so much dimension and just take what they need and don't even need. And, don't let themselves be as full as they can and don't let the world be as full as it is to them. And uh, no more telling place than in a place like this, which is well, a sacred place to me. And, uh, and even past sacred, because it's past my understanding. And, uh, oh yeah, it's swell, great canoeing or Good fishing, you know, those are the adjectives and those are the mental attitudes that people will take towards it, which are little attitudes, you know, which are a start, but uh, that's why I would like to see it in some way uh, made a preserve or something that start to say, it starts to take on some sort of sacrosanct idea in people's minds and the backs of their minds. If someone tells them that something is uh, uh, has this incredible meaning, then uh, then they believe it. But otherwise, they just use it. But it's incredible because you can just be driving along the typical west. Oh, there goes the yellow warbler. The typical Western New York uh, 
farmland and uh, beautiful farmland, but you'd never know that all this was in here, all these lakes and these kind of, you know, pristine, primitive situations just sort of tucked away back in here. You can only keep so much dusk, a little sliver of twilight in your hands, one low chant of the long dark land, one gesture of leaves on the tip of a hilltop tree. You can go into the lone cabin at dusk and ponder your small keepsake in the dim light and sleep with a little peace under your pillow. You can only keep so much dusk.